Hey guys, uh, typically this quiz is rough for people, so I figured I'd basically give some old quizzes that uh, you can use to kind of practice on. Normally I don't do that, but also I figured I'd make a video of me really fast going through the first one. That way if you have questions, you can hopefully get answers from here if I can't get to you in class. I'm gonna go super fast, so you might have to back things up. You're welcome if you're getting, go through, do the whole thing, and then just go back and look at the parts of the video for the ones you had wrong. Um, anywho, here we go. So name, Mr. Falk. And uh, first question, uh, well, one, notice these. You'll probably want those later on in class on this quiz. Okay, um, so write a scale in two different ways. Well, one way is to take that equal sign and just turn it into a colon. So one centimeter colon two meters. The other way to look at a scale is as a fraction, and the numerator is always the thing that comes first. So one centimeter over two meters. That's the answer to number one. Next thing here on the map below, uh, the distance between Scottville and Ludington is 8.6 miles. Use a ruler to find the scale on the map. Have the answer in the form of that. Um, so one, the answer then is just going to be this part here. It's number two, so the answer will be one centimeter equals something. Well, for that, we go with that equation right there. So when we're looking at our scale, it's going to be the distance on the map divided by the distance in real life which is really kind of the same thing as this. Real life is the original, you know, the earth God made, then the new is going to be the map that we make from it. But pretty much all these questions are going to go through and set up something like that, but they're going to use a proportion. So you're going to have one fraction equals another fraction. Uh, so the distance on the map, you take out your trusty little ruler and you'd put one dot on your ruler right there. You could go center to center. Um, what I often will do is go from right edge to right edge. I find that's a little bit easier to be accurate. But if you take and put the ruler on there, you should come up with 6.1 centimeters. And I would encourage you to be as accurate as you can. So don't just say six, 6.1 centimeters. And they tell us that the real life distance for that, the distance in life is this 8.6 miles. So we're gonna put that over 8.6 miles. And typically you put a one with a smaller number. Um, oh, actually in this case we put the one because it's one centimeter equals something. We want to have one on top. Units here are centimeters, units there will be centimeters, so cm. And units have to be the same in the bottom as well, so if we have 8.6 miles, it'll be miles there. Once we have that done, slide up the page. We could cross, multiply, and divide. So we're taking and doing, um, put an X in there. That's what we're trying to find. Uh, 6.1X equals uh, 8.6 times 1. Often I don't do the times 1. I would just write 8.6, but don't want to cut too many corners and confuse people. Um, so I end up getting 6.1x equals 8.6. To figure out what x is, I do the opposite of what was done to it. It was x times 6.1, so I by 6.1. And that's going to give me x equals 1.459. 1.459 is x, that means I'm going to put it in right there, which the reason I'm showing you that is it tells you what the units are. So these here, is if the units are different, let me quick write this in. If the units are different on the two sides of the equals, here I have centimeter, here I have miles, then you have to include them. So most of this practice quiz up until the last page, you're going to have to put units in on everything. All right, we got this thing here. Scale, the map of the scale below, one inch equals nine meters, whenever, nine miles. Whenever you see something like this, pretty much all the questions on the test, you're gonna be doing a proportion. A fraction equals a fraction. And I would encourage you, whenever you see a scale given to you, first step, even before reading the rest of the question, is put it in that first fraction. Because that's going to tell you a lot, even without reading the question. It's going to tell you that in our second fraction, the numerator has to be inches. The denominator has to be measured in miles. Um, and now we need to read the rest of the question to figure out what we're doing. So map below, blah, blah, blah. What is the distance across Kent County? So what is the, how far does it take you to get from Ottawa County line here to the Ionia County line here? Uh, like from big black dot to big black dot. So we're looking for the distance in miles across Kent County. Well, if we're trying to put an X right there, we're going to have to know a number on the top. So take your trusty ruler, and once you have your ruler, 
you could go from center of the dot. The dots are the same size. You could do center to center. Honestly, I'd probably choose like the left edge to the left edge or maybe right below it, that to that. Do that there. My dots are a little big. I kind of wish they weren't so big. Um, if I were to punch that in, my I should come up to 2.5 inches. 2.5 inches. And now it's just math like you've been doing for a long time. When we cross multiply, I have that times that. So 1x equals... 9 times 2.5. Punch that in my calculator, I get x equals 9 times 2.5 is 22.5. And again, that is going to be going right there. So the question, what's the distance across Kent County? It's going to be 22.5 miles, because miles is the units for the denominator of that fraction, 22.5 mi. All right, that's number three. Say we're going to make a model of the American horse at Frederick Meyer Gardens. Um, if the real horse is 33.25 feet tall, our model has a scale. Of, ooh, boom, there's our scale. So um, I'm going to stop and pause in the middle of my reading it even and say, all right, I know it's going to be a fraction equals a fraction, one inch over 2.25 feet. And I know my second fraction is going to be inches over feet. Okay. Start back at the beginning. American horse, Frederick Meyer Gardens, the real horse is 33.25 feet tall. So I'm probably going to put that number there. Let's keep reading. If our model has a scale of 1 inch equals 2.25 feet, how tall will our model be? Perfect. So we're looking for x inches. How tall is our model going to be when the real thing is 33.25 feet? All right, now we'll cross, multiply, and divide to figure this thing out. So I get 2.25 times x equals 1 times 33.25. And I'm just doing that times that equals that times that. Which one's on the left doesn't matter. I just like seeing my x on the left. So 2.25 times x equals 33.25. So when I divide by 2.25, divide by 2.25, I come up with x being 14.7 repeating. So I'm going to write that here, 14.7 repeating. Um, now the question is 14.7 repeating what? Well, if I put it in there for x, I can see it has to be inches. So 14.7 repeating inches. You round it to 14.8, totally fine. 15 even, you probably could get away with 14.8 or 14.7 repeating. Definitely be the better two questions. All right, number five, let's kind of hit the ground running on this baby. Um, I'm going to jump ahead and just in flipping to the problem, my eyes pick that out without even reading it. So I'm going to start by writing that down. So I have one inch over 20 feet. That's going to equal a second fraction with inches on the top and feet on the bottom. And now if I go back to my problem, if a drawing of that Titanic is 44.15 inches long, so 44.15 inches, chances are we need to figure out x. Um, <clears throat> how long is the, and was drawn on the scale of 1 inch equals 20 feet, how long was the Titanic in real life? And if you think back to that first page where we had the equations, uh, we said it's the new divided by the original, you know, so our um, our model is going to be that new, the original, it's based on the original. So it all fits that equation that we were doing. But you don't even need the equation if you're just putting the, the scale in as your first fraction. Alright, here we go. So now I could say 1 times x, if I'm cross multiplying, I have that there, equals that times that, equals 20 times 44.15. So x then, if I punch that in, gives me 883. And 883 is going to be my number that goes in for x, so I know it's going to be feet. So the real Titanic, 883 feet long. All right, then. Number six. Number six is going to be a two-stepper, I think. Uh, again, I see the scale right here. Um, so I got my scale right there. So I'm going to put that in as my first fraction. So one centimeter over 0 0.25 miles equals. So we'll have a distance in centimeters over a distance in miles. All right, let's read the question. The map above has a scale of one centimeter equals 0.25 miles. How long will it take Jeff to walk from school to the library if his average speed is that? Well, you could do this a couple different ways. You could flip to that first page and say, oh, 
How long will it take? How much time? Well, time is going to be a distance divided by a speed. Okay, cool. We know a speed is right there, 3.1. 3.1 miles per hour. And we just need a distance. Well, the distance... You could measure, let's see, it's school to the library. So we have school right here. So I'm going to say middle of the school building to the middle of the library. I suppose you could do door to door if you wanted to, and I'll have to give a range of correct answers on this thing here. Um, I digress. Okay, so you could do that, but that's the distance. If I put my ruler on there, that's not going to be the distance in miles. It's not going to be the distance that we put right here in this equation. We need, like, what is the actual distance the dude's walking, not just the distance on the paper. So to find that, we need to use this top proportion. All right, so when I go through and measure that, let me find this. Put my ruler on there, I should get 7.5 centimeters. And then I put that in here, 7.5 centimeters. And that's going to tell me how many miles it is. So I'll cross multiply, 1 times x equals 0 0.25 times 7.5. x then is going to be 1.875. And if I look at it as though I could put that number right there, that's going to be a certain number of miles. So my distance that I could put in this bottom equation, 1.875 miles. And now that's going to work out slick because I have miles right here and I have miles right there. So those two miles are going to cancel out as we go through and do this problem and leave me with a final answer that's just going to be H for units. So 1.875 divided by 3.1, punch that into a calculator, you get 0.605. So you could write your answer one of a couple different ways. You could say 0 .605 hours. Could even put the little zero in front if you wanted to. So a little over a half hour. If you wanted to, you could say, well, I have 60 minutes in an hour. So 0 .605 times 60, that's going to give me 36.3 minutes. So either one of those would be an okay answer. I would guess most people would just stick with the hours because that's going to be a little bit easier to do. All right, we're on the last page finally. Um, Uncle Edgar wants to construct a 1.5 foot high birdhouse modeled after his actual house, which is 34 feet high. So how is he going to do it? What scale should he be using? So if we go back to uh, that first page, you could find where it says the equation scale equals new divided by the original. So as we go through and set up our proportion, the distances on the top have to be the new, which would be the birdhouse, because the original is his house. So I'm going to start and say 1.5 foot high birdhouse is the new, modeling it after his 34 foot high house. So now you'll notice first time on the quiz, our units are the same in the top and bottom. So now we don't need units because they're different. Um, 1.5 feet on the house is going to be the same as 34 feet on his house. 1.5 inches on his birdhouse, same as 34 inches on his real house. So those units just kind of drop out. All right. What scale should he use? Well, scales, scales we're always writing them as like one to something if you're making it smaller or something to one if you're making it larger. Um, typically, you can go and look at where's the smaller number. And we're just going to put a 1 up here and solve for x. So I get 1.5 times x equals 34 times 1. So 1.5x equals 34. 34 divided by 1.5 gives me x equals 22.6 repeating. So that 22.6 repeating rounded to 22.7, 22.67. You can't just say 22.6 or 22.66. You have to round up your last digit. That's going to be going in right here, 22.6 repeating. So my scale then is 1 over that. So you could write it as a fraction, or I prefer to see it this way, 1 colon 22.6 repeating, or 1 colon 22.7 or 0.67. All right, this very last one, we're going to do a similar thing. 
We have a scale on our poster. Now this one ends up being a little bit weird because it ends up being the same in both directions. I can't guarantee that'll be the same on your real quiz. But scale equals new over original. And we really need to do this problem twice. I have this five by seven picture, so five by seven, that I wanna make into something that's 30, so not drawn to scale, but 30 by 42. So we have to do the problem once, looking at how much bigger can I make it vertically, and then do it a second time, saying how much bigger can I make it horizontally, and then decide which one we could keep. So I'll do that green first. And okay, so my new is gonna be the 30, because I'm taking and making this five by seven picture into the poster, the new is the poster. So I get 30 over five, and they're both inches. So just like that last one, I can just drop them because the units are the same. Well, since I'm making it bigger, my X ends up being on the top. You could say the one goes in with the smaller number. And when I cross multiply and divide here, I get 5x equals 30 times 1. 5x equals 30. So to find x, I divide by 5x is 6. So in other words, my 6 is up here. So I have a 6 over 1, which is, I like to see it, a 6 to 1 ratio. And units are the same, so we don't need units in there. Now we do the exact same question, but down below. We could say, all right, now what could I do horizontally? What's my stretch side to side? So same thing, the new over the original. So my new is my 42 over 7, my original. And I'm going to do an x over 1. So the solutions look kind of the same math-wise. I get 7x equals 42 times 1. 7x equals 42. Divide by 7, divide by 7. x equals 6. So if I have a six up here in the numerator divided by a one, that's a six to one ratio. So kind of three an easy one here because they're both the same. So you just, all right, final answer is gonna be a six to one ratio. If they happen to be different, because we're making something larger this time, you'd have to keep the ones that were the smaller difference because the larger difference would go off the page in one direction. So for example, if I had a, so totally different question. If I had a seven to one ratio and a 6.4 to one ratio, there's a smaller difference here between 6.4 and one. Because we're making it bigger, we'd keep the smaller difference. If we had a different question where you were taking something large and so say something really big and making it something really small, now your ratios would come out to be like a, say a one to four and a one to 3.5. So if I'm making something smaller, if I'm going down, then I would keep the bigger difference between the two. So keep that in mind also. So that's going through the quiz kind of fast, as fast as I could and still make sense. Like I said, ask me questions in class if you have them, but your quiz, those are the skills I want you to know. You're gonna see similar stuff on your quiz. Thanks, bye. I am going to divide.